So now I'm going to do an intro. How's that? Okay. Sorry about that. No, no. <laughs> She's so cute. <laughs> Today on A Word on Westerns, we're going to be speaking with a lady whose career in Westerns is phenomenal. Jan Shepard appeared in Them All. Death Valley Days, Grey Ghost, The Lawman, Rawhide. Gunsmoke. Gunsmoke, Bonanza, The High Chaparral. Uh, she did them all. I did them all. And, and here she is. <laughs> <laughs> That's amazing that you were in so many different westerns. I know you didn't do them exclusively, but you were in more westerns than, than any other actress I can think of. I know. Uh, <laughs> and uh, of all those, were, were the good guys really good? Oh, they were wonderful. I don't know if there's any wranglers here, stuntmen. Boy, they're the greatest. They're the greatest to work with. I'm telling you, they protect you like you're a baby. If you, you know, if you try to get up on a horse, they're there pushing you up, and <laughs> they're just wonderful. You know, I had a funny feeling when I did my first Western, though, really, that I had been there before. I was very comfortable in the clothes, I was comfortable with the morals of a Western. Uh, and and it, I, I, I don't know, I think I lived before. I, what was your I'm first sure. Western? Do you remember? Tales of the Texas Rangers. Oh, wow. Do you remember? Yeah. <laughs> that's where, that's where uh, they were walking down the street at the beginning and were joined by different uh, people until at the uh, end of the opening credits, there was a street filled with Texas Rangers. And at the end of the show, it would be the opposite of that. It was Willard uh, Parker, Parker and Harry Lauder yes. who were the uh, yeah. Texas Rangers based on the radio series that starred Joel McRae. I worked with him, too. Let's, so let's talk about Joel McRae. What did you work with Joel McRae on? On, uh, oh gee, what was his series called? Wichita Town. Wichita Town, yes. Uh, I played a pregnant lady <laughs> on that show, and uh, I actually was. <laughs> and it was so funny because when we were shooting, uh, one of the guys said, we're going to break for lunch or something. Why don't you take that thing off? <laughs> he said, you'll be a lot more comfortable. And I took his hand and I went, it's not a thing. It's a baby. <laughs> so, no, Joe McRae, it was phenomenal. Gee, what a nice man. Mm -hmm. And I met his wife just maybe two, three years ago. Francis D. Francis D. And she said... Uh, I introduced myself and said, I worked with your husband and your son, Joel. And she said, oh, tell me all about it. She, what a lovely lady. Yeah, she she sure was, was a terrific woman. Yeah. Beautiful, too, just beyond words. Very beautiful. You did multiple episodes of Gunsmoke. Many. And was there a consistency in the crew and the team and the mood that was uh, on that show? It lasted for 20 years. Well, first of all, I was roommate with Amanda Blake for two years <laughs> before she got gun smoke. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And I've got a funny story about her. Well, let's hear it. Uh, well, we were, she wanted to get on that show and uh, we were just living from paycheck to paycheck. I was working at iMagnons at the time and she was wanted to go on this interview for Gunsmoke, and we had to round up quarters and nickels and dimes because she wanted to dress in a Western outfit. So she had to go to the West and rent it, rent the dress. But it paid off. <laughs> she got the part. And but that uh, Amanda and I go back a long way. Well, what type of person was she? She was a hot little girl, I'll tell you. <laughs> she had that gorgeous red hair, you know, and green eyes, and just beautiful. One time, I'll just give you a little hint of what she was like, really. One time, we were about to have a dinner, and uh, 
we invited some friends over and one of her boyfriends came by and he was telling her she was doing the salad incorrectly, cutting it incorrectly. Well, she ran in the bathroom, locked the door, and I said, Amanda, don't do this. I've worked all day and I'm tired and please come on out. She said, no, I'm going to kill myself. And I said, uh, how? <laughs> and she said, I've got a razor blade. And I went, oh my God. Amanda, please do me a favor. Get in the bathtub. If you're gonna cut your wrists, I don't wanna have to mop up blood at the end of the night. Well, she came out and says, you didn't really care. I said, yes, I cared, but I'm tired. <laughs> <laughs> but she was she was feisty, she's so feisty. Now, Big Jim Arness was such oh. a, a stalwart hero yeah. on that show. Yeah. What was he like in person? Well, in person, he was just the same as he was. Really, he was Matt Dillon. I mean, he was. Um, it was funny because I had to do a scene with him, and I'm playing a hooker with a black eye. And he's trying to get out to me who gave me the black eye. And I, I just say everything else but. And he actually got annoyed with me. I said, Jim, it's in the script. <laughs> <laughs> you know? And he was lovely to work with. Uh, uh, Chester made him laugh all the time. I mean, he, he kept the spirits going on the set. He was wonderful. Yeah. Now, you mentioned that you played a hooker. Now, in the early TV westerns, it seems like that there were only two types of women, the, the hookers and the good girls. The one who waved goodbye right. when they took off on their horses and they never saw them again, right? <laughs> yeah, they should have been hookers. Yeah. <laughs> well, actually, so many of the women who, who lived with these cowboys were hookers. You know, in the days they had to make money. Mm -hmm. You know, somehow. Now, in in the '50s shows that you did, I mean, uh, again, Bat Masterson wasn't very realistic, and the women in that were they were usually damsels in distress or conniving. Yeah. And were you able to to play each type different times? Oh yeah, I I I played really bad girls and I but mostly played nice girls mm -hmm. yeah. what was the the baddest meanest girl you played well I got involved with a priest one time <laughs> <laughs> okay that counts does that count that that was in a gun smoke and uh, you want to know about the bad ones huh well yeah <laughs> it's it's because today in today's world you have to have a little darkness or the shows don't last. I know, yeah, so. I know. No, but I usually played the, the wife, the mother, the, the leading lady, you know. Like I said, waving goodbye, crying. <laughs> you know, they'd, they'd hire me because I cry easily. <laughs> so uh, it was, but mostly, all of them were wonderful roles. I'm telling you, we had some great writers in those days, some wonderful writers, and especially a writer called Richard Nelson. He really knew women, mm -hmm. and I, were, I did a lot of his shows. Now, did the writers ever come on set, or were they just, uh, you just saw the script and recognized their names and says, oh, this is, this is gonna yeah, be a good part yeah. for me? Well, I, you know, usually it, it would be the producer who gets the script, mm -hmm. and it's a dramatic thing, you know, it has to be very dramatic, and, and, and he would call me and I'd say, who wrote it? And he'd say, well, Richard Nelson. I'd go, great, yeah, that's wonderful. Yeah, I did a bunch of his stuff. My name is Rob Word, and we love bringing these programs to you. We've got a lot more scheduled coming up. We post a new one every single week, and we want you to subscribe, like, and share. Thanks for watching.